you can't have a group come together as well as they did without leaders like Kelly O'Hara, even Emily Sonnet in the back line, Andy Sullivan, with also having really young, naive rookies playing on your team as well with Sanchez, Mickey Own, and Rodman that don't know any different. They don't know any better. Today, we are talking about the 2021 NWSL final. Now, if you are keeping track, the last one we did was 2019 uh, because there was no NWSL regular season in 2020 due to the pandemic. There was the Challenge Cup in a bubble. There was the Fall Series. So we are jumping to 2021. And this year, Sandra, 2021 final is a really special one for us and for Attacking Third because it was our first year covering the NWSL final for Attacking Third. I, I that was like the first thing that stood out for me. Like once I knew we were going to get here because of how we were going to roll this out, we knew 2019 was going to be kind of like a, a skipping a fast forwarding point because of some of how 2020 played out. But then the, that's the biggest thing for me. It was like, yeah, that's right. 2021, we were ringing in attacking third. We wanted to smash the space with stuff that had never been done before and there you and I were like constantly live living live living that live life live. Do, doing doing episodes we felt like daily when we thought we were just going to do them a few times a week um but no regrets and I'm really excited that we get to relive some of some of this journey no regrets if you were with <laughs> us back in 2021 for the lead up to the 2021 championship and the recap of it let us know drop us a note about that the 2021 NWSL final took place in Louisville, Kentucky at Lynn Family Stadium. It was Saturday, November 20th. Um, it was a 12 p.m. Eastern kickoff, and it was between Washington Spirit and the Chicago Red Stars. Over 10,000 fans in attendance, but it's all about the lead up. How Washington and Chicago made it to the 2021 final at the end of the regular season in 2021 portland thorns they clinched the shield earning that first spot on 44 points 13 wins five draws six losses ol rain which is now seattle rain they were in second place with 13 wins eight draws or excuse me three draws eight losses 42 points only two points behind their cascadia rival portland in third place was washington spirit 39 points 11 wins three draws eight losses and Chicago Red Stars. They sat in fourth and the top four teams made the postseason. Chicago with 38 points, 11 wins, five draws and eight losses. Um, that year after the conclusion of the regular season, it was Washington Spirit that ran away with some of the awards. Ashley Hatch, a forward for the Spirit, won the Golden Boot on 10 goals. Trinity Rodman, she led the league with her assists at six. And they went into the postseason um, with a target on their back, this Washington Spirit side. But when you think about this 2021 season, Sandra, and, and how the regular season ended and going into the postseason, Chicago was right up there at the top of them. But what do you remember about um, this postseason in 2021? Oh, but I'll be frank. It was weird. <laughs> the twenty twenty one, the twenty twenty one, everything was was weird. And I think this is where I was like, "Wow, I'm really if I'm gonna relive twenty twenty one, I'm really glad that I'm doing it in a safe space with a friend." Um, because it it was weird, and by weird, I mean there were a lot of tough stretches uh, of this season leading into this postseason. Uh, it, we're talking about how we had to fast forward a little bit to this this 2021 final because of how 2020 played out. There was no regular season in the 2020, uh, during 2020. There was a challenge, an inaugural Challenge Cup instead. So this was the first season back for NWSL, full-fledged regular season. And I think throughout some of the journeys of that season, we got to see players kind of get reintegrated into the long grind of what it means to be a professional athlete navigating such a long season. We hear so often about how it's a grind, how you got to take it bite by bite. And I think that was pretty reflective over the course of 2021. When we're talking about comparing that this year or the 2021 to this year in 2024, I mean, some of the stats that you rattled off, we're talking about, you know, Ashley Hatch, a golden boot winner with 10 goals. And here we are celebrating Ten much we can go with with twenty goals mm -hmm. in twenty twenty four. I think for me, when I think back in twenty twenty one, it was it, it, there's mixed feelings about it because the truth is is while these teams went to the postseason and wanted to go ahead and compete and try to go ahead and win a title, there were a lot of things off of the pitch that were 
very much affecting the players at this time. We're talking about a year in which COVID was still a, a factor. We'll probably get into that once we get into the actual final, um, where players were, again, still trying to get their, their footing underneath them and, and navigate their lives as pro careers. Um, and there was a, a lot of breakthrough, groundbreaking reporting around mm -hmm. the league. And a abuse scandals that were coming to light and all of these things deeply, deeply affected the players in the buildup to this postseason. And I would argue for Washington spirit, as we continue to talk about this game, they had a bit of chaos energy around them because of everything that was happening off of the pitch that was technically out of the player's control. Absolutely. It was a chaotic year in, in 2021. Um, let's talk the playoffs. First round of the playoffs, it was Chicago taking on um, Sky Blue FC, which is now Gotham FC. Chicago Red Stars beat Sky Blue, Gotham 1-0. Mal Pugh got a 61st minute goal. Washington Spirit took on the North Carolina Courage. It went into extra time. And that's when Ashley Hatch scored the game-winning goal to lift Washington 1-0 over North Carolina in the 113th minute. So Washington, at this point, had taken down the two-time reigning NWSL champions back-to-back -back in North Carolina Courage. Then we advanced to the semifinals because it was a showdown. Washington Spirit goes on the road to take on OL Reign, which is now Seattle Reign, and they get a huge come from behind win over rain. It was Eugenie Le Sommer, the French international midfielder who scores the opening goal in just the third minutes for rain. Then nine minutes later, Trinity Rodman answers in the 12th minute and draws things level. It takes until the second half and it's Washington spirit midfielder, Ashley Sanchez, who gets the game winner in the 68th minute. Washington wins two one to OL rain. Chicago, Sandra, they also went on the road to Portland Thorns, the Shield winners, um, and it ends up being a shutout win for the Red Stars. Two nil goals from Katie Johnson in the 37th minute and Sarah Waldmo in the 59th minute. After that semi, Sandra, you had to feel pretty good about Chicago heading into the final, considering they shut out the Shield winners. Sure. I, I, felt, I felt something, but I'm not going to say that it was like <laughs> thrilling by any means because throwing it back to how some of these teams got here to the final. I remember Kalia Watt coming out of that Portland Thorn semifinal with what looked like a pretty rough injury. We would later find out that it was in fact a torn ACL. So there was a, again, 2021 was the epitome of mixed emotions. I think when it comes to navigating a regular season and this postseason, the fact that we're talking about a, a quarterfinal stage ahead of the semifinal stage was also a new thing for NWSL. This was the first year that they expanded the playoffs to a 16 format. So like this concept of like, oh, it's going to be a little bit of an even longer journey to the final if you want to get back there. But somehow Chicago were a little bit re-energized, uh, I think, by by that moment. They definitely were a squad that were struggling to keep a bit of a healthy roster. They were very, very reliant on Morgan Gatra, Vanessa DiBernardo, the, the core of their midfield at the time, and, and Sarah Waldmo. And you're mentioning in the semifinal uh, how they came out with, with two goals. One was a, a credible banger by Katie Johnson at a weird angle and then yes. Sarah Waldmo again another midfielder stepping up for Chicago who just had a banger from distance so it definitely was a little bit of an upset factor I think when we're looking about the seating of teams and also kind of the legacy of teams going into the postseason yes Chicago had made a lot of uh, runs in in the playoffs but they always maybe fell a little short going into those final stages. And then here they were in sort of these kind of consecutive appearances, whether it was in that 2019 final, even making that 2020 Challenge Cup final, and then now in 2021, breaking their way through to another championship final. The final was set up for Washington Spirit against the Chicago Red Stars. Washington Spirit, um, let me take you through their lineup for the 2021 NWSL Championship match. In goal, they had Aubrey Bledsoe, who we all now know as Aubrey Kingsbury. Across the back line was Tegan McGrady, Sam Staub, Emily Sonnet, and Kelly O'Hara. In the midfield, Dorian Bailey, Andy Sullivan, Ashley Sanchez, and then up top, Tara McKeown, Trinity Rodman, 
and Ashley Hatch. Remember the good old days when Tara McKeown was a forward and now <laughs> forward. she's a center back? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I think we definitely have to like react to some of the, the rookies here. Right. I mean, like my goodness, like, do you remember Trinity Rodman getting drafted? It was like, again, it was a virtual draft. There were all these precautions yeah. coming out of COVID. Like it just was, it's again, it's, <laughs> weird times man glad we're recapping it together do it, only recap 2021 with a friend y'all highly recommend <laughs> Um, but like, that's part of it. It's like, oh, wow. It's like, yeah, Terry McKeown was absolutely part of this, you know, young core of players that were coming into the spirit. And here she was just a attacker, attacker, attacker. And now we see her in, in a different role in 2024. I know now she's as a center back and, and a yeah. very good center back in the league. One of the top center backs. Um, okay. Take us through Chicago Red Stars and their starting lineup for the 2021 final. For sure. This is how they rolled out for the final. They had Cassie Miller in net. Aaron Wright, Tarnit Davidson, Sarah Gordon, Tatum Malazzo, uh, Sarah Waldmore, Mo uh, Morgan Gutra, Mallory Pugh at the time, now Swanson, Vanessa DiBernardo, Rachel Hill, and Katie Johnson. I think for me, Lisa, looking at this, the, again, the first things that stick out are the fact that there are some players missing or not used right away. Again, going into this final, there was a lot of hyper focus on the availability of players uh, coming out of some of those playoff rounds, Mal Pugh was uh, unavailable during some trainings because of a positive COVID test. Kayla Sharples as well, a player <laughs> unavailable. Then they had to deal with Kayla Watt not being available. And then that's not to mention the things that maybe some of these players were playing through during this moment. Cassie Miller in net is yeah. one of those things that stands out immediately. Because again, we're talking about the health of this squad going into the playoffs. Alyssa Nair was unavailable because coming out of those Olympics sustained that knee injury. So it was definitely a bit of like, this is who we are. This is who we got and we all we got. So let's go. Exactly. We are gritty. This is the squad we're rolling with. And and at this time, there was also a lot of changes constantly about COVID tests and what was going to happen and yeah. making sure players were available to play. There was a lot of hoops that these teams had to jump through. And Louisville, who was hosting this at Lynn Family Stadium, had to jump through as well. You were on the ground, of course, because you've been on the ground for these, but covering it specifically with attacking third and for CBS. Um, what do you remember about being in Louisville for this this championship matchup? I got to give some love here to Louisville because I remember them getting the, being awarded the the final that they were going to be the host of this sort of pre-selected site and they were very excited about it. It was a, a lot of good energy. Their supporters groups out there it didn't matter who ultimately made it through into the final. They wanted to put on a fun event. They really wanted to say showcase Louisville as a place that not only appreciates women's soccer but you can go through and have and have a good time, right? I think maybe they get a little bit of a flag where it's just like, "Oh, like that's a college town." Or whatever it's like no this is this is going to be a city that's uh, known for its uh, major professional sports because they've got a women's a fully professionalized women's uh, division one team here so uh, there was definitely that sort of mentality around it it was really good kind of connecting with folks on the ground who kind of just reiterated that that they just wanted everybody to come in and and have a good time and kind of celebrate what is supposed to be the de facto event for nwsl Let's get into the game because Chicago against Washington, um, a, a bit of a odd personnel situation happening here. So much off the pitch. But when we go between the white lines, um, this first half was a little bit chaotic. It took a, a, a minute for both teams to actually settle into the game. But just before the halftime whistle, moments before the final seconds of stoppage time in the first half, Chicago score. And it comes a little bit unlikely. Aaron Wright, she ends up going down the left flank and sending a cross into the back post to find Rachel Hill, who is absolutely wide open. She heads it in. So now Red Stars are going into the halftime up 1-0 over Washington. They are feeling themselves, especially with all this personnel change and so many things going against the Red Stars. They get this moment and the celebration. I love that celebration picture. And shout out to Rachel Hill. I played with her growing up. And I remember being like, that is so awesome uh, uh, Like to see her get that moment. However, second half, Washington had, had light come into them. They had young, electric attackers, right? You think Ashley Hatch, Trinity Rodman as a rookie, Ashley Sanchez playing her first regular season games, um, Tara McKeown also a rookie. And, and this Washington side, 
They had the youth and the young attackers up top, and then they had experienced U.S. women's national team depth at the defense. Andy Sullivan in the midfield, Kelly O'Hara and Emily Sonnet in the back line, Aubrey Bledsoe, now Kingsbury, who had found herself pretty significantly in the U.S. women's national team mix. So the, the talent was all there for Washington, especially on paper. Rodman in the 60th minute, she gets an insane shot off the post. And then the equalizer comes for Washington Spirit. 66th minute, the rookie Tara McKeown, she draws a penalty against Tierna Davidson. It's in the box. Andy Sullivan steps up. Um, it, frankly, it's not struck very well by David by um, Andy Sullivan. It, it should have been saved, but it doesn't. It goes under Cassie Miller's arms. And things are level 1-1. And that's how regulation ends, Sandra. 1-1 between Washington and Chicago. Stress. High stress. <laughs> <laughs> absolute, <laughs> absolute high stress. And honestly, like a straight up tale of two halves to sort of hear you run down the, the regulation. You know, I mean, congratulations to Rachel Hill for, for still having that history. She's the only Red Star player to ever actually score in a, in the championship final for, for the club that belongs to her until, until it doesn't. Um, but that's yeah, we, a crazy stat. It, it, that's, it, that's and kind of saying, sad. I mean, a, it's sad and B it's also like well-earned because I mean, we're talking totally. about a franchise that is like at this point in their history, a couple of years removed from, the great Sam Kerr, right? And so they had at least one championship final uh, with her and they, and, and all of their times in it, no one had scored a goal, but Rachel Hill was able to do that. And the timing of it was incredible. But I think we saw that resurgence. We saw the momentum shift for the spirit who were going through some incredible stuff of, of their own, right? All of the, the ownership back and forth discourse outside of the pitch, having a player with that experience in Kelly O'Hara to sort of kind of rally everyone in together and say, again, this is, this mm -hmm. is us and no one else. Like this is where we're at. And you could see them kind of rally around each other and around that kind of mentality. And it really broke through in that second half. There was no way they were trending the way they were going into extra time and not walking away with this title. You can't have a team that is going through so much chaos on the outside, right? The club was going through a sale. There was a lot of investigation happening. And you can't have a group come together as well as they did without leaders like Kelly O'Hara, even Emily Sonnet in the back line, Andy Sullivan, with also having really young, naive rookies playing on your team as well with Sanchez, Mickey Own, and Rodman that don't know any different. They don't know any better. And I, I remember Sandra on attacking third in 2021, us talking so much about how Washington as a team, as the players have blocked out so much noise around yeah. them. And when they stepped on the pitch, it looked different. And sometimes you have to go through all that craziness on the outside, even though you shouldn't have to, in order to like find the solace and the the strength within to fight on the pitch to with each other. And in the second half of this championship final, the 60th minute on, we saw a different gear from Washington, specifically oh, yeah. from Trinity Rodman. In, in after regulation, going into the extra time, I mean. That was at moments when it was like, you cannot leave Trinity Rodman without two or three defenders around her. She was having the game of her life, going 1v1, setting others up, dancing on the flanks, but being really comfortable to cut in and doing all of this in her rookie year at just 19 years old. And all game, Rodman had been looking to get on the end of crosses, coming in from the opposite side from Kelly O'Hara. And in the 97th minute in extra time, the roles were reversed. Trinity Rodman receives the ball on the outside and she crosses it in from the left side into the back post and finds an unlikely goal scorer in Kelly O'Hara. All game, it had been the reverse. O'Hara crossing it to Rodman and now it's O'Hara finding the back of the net for her first goal of the season to give Washington a 2-1 lead in the 97th minute. Still a lot of extra time to play. Chicago, they had good moments. They That was a time when it was like, they need to step it up. And for the next several minutes, as the clock ticked towards 120, there were some really big saves coming from Aubrey Bledsoe, Kingsbury in goal for Washington Spirit to keep Chicago out, to keep Washington with the lead. Did you think at the, the extra time after Washington got that 2-1 goal, Sandra, that there was a moment while Chicago was going to come back? Absolutely not. I've seen this. <laughs> I've seen this play too many times. I, I can't say it's one of my favorites, but I've definitely found myself watching it year after year after year. I mean, 
Mallory Pugh, now Swanson at this point in the game, is is out. Um, she, Kelly O'Hara, had a really tough challenge. It was enough to kind of make her not feel right, and Mal Pugh was an, a, no longer a, a factor in this role for, for Chicago. And while there was that sort of layer of, like, anything can happen, this team is rallying behind each other, you could just see the kind of um, very tough grind of a regular season and postseason catch up to Chicago at this point in – extra time and the fact that the spirit not only went ahead with the go-ahead goal but did it so early in extra time there was definitely again what did i say the other day if there's something i'm going to bring to this show it's going to be chicago realness and yeah. it just when you when you see it and you know what's coming it's just like that's done and dusted and that was kind of the vibe honestly after that it, credit to the players because they they didn't give up the, you know a, a fight or effort or la show lack of effort throughout the remainder of extra time but you could just see that there was a struggle to to try and actually get things through the desperation did start to set in for the urgency I remember uh, Aaron Wright getting a really good good shot off and it just when something that like that doesn't go your way you just know it's it's trending in the other direction Washington ultimately win 2-1. They become NWSL champions thanks to a penalty kick goal from Andy Sullivan in the second half of regulation. And then Kelly O'Hara's extra time game winner in the 97th minute. Washington earns their first star above their crest and their first trophy for the club as we take a look at the celebration photos and, and everything um, that took place in Louisville after that final Aubrey Kingsbury, Aubrey Bledsoe in goal for Washington Spirit. She earns the NWSL Championship MVP for her Absolutely. acrobatic saves in goal. Well-deserved, right, yep. Sandra? Absolutely. We're Absolutely. talking about maybe some of that urgency Chicago's playing with doesn't go through because uh, Bledsoe's there. And Michelle Kang, the new owner of Washington Spirit, she gets to celebrate with the team in all her very fashionable glory. I love <laughs> to see it. it. It was fun. This was a fun one. Then we dragged you back to your hotel and we, we jumped on attacking third and we recapped it, but Washington, right. they pick up their first club championship trophy and title. They get a star above their crest two one over the Chicago red stars. Makes me excited for November 23rd coming up, Sandra. We'll see. Getting chills. We're getting there closer and closer. <laughs> getting chills. I love doing these countdown to Kansas cities.